when you go above and beyond and you do more work than anybody would ever think to do, you create connection with that person that makes you their realtor for life. Everyone, thanks for joining us. We've got Justin. Justin, I'm going to screw up your last name, but it's Himmelbaum. You did great. I, I love it. I've been practicing. Small following, big dreams, how just 5,000 followers made him a millionaire. Justin's out of Delray, Florida. And how long have you been a real estate agent, Justin? Coming up in six years. Six years, man. I love that. It's like the, the lucky six. Yeah. How about now? And Nick's back. Are we can hear you, buddy. Thank goodness. What I miss, guys? I miss all the I, interesting stuff. I did the intro. We're you ready did to not. Go. Did you I really? did. Did you really do the intro? I did. I did the intro. Oh, I wanted to do it so bad. Oh, well. I, did, I said how sexy he was and how amazing of a so human. Did you really do the intro that he sent us? I, I didn't do the intro he sent us, no. Oh, can I do it, please? Sure, go. Okay, here's an intro that um Justin sent us. So we, we want to make sure. <laughs> go, go for it. Okay. Just don't uh, breathe. Yeah. Uh, a master of turning his sphere of influence into clients, Justin Himmelbaum went from 20000 in debt I can beat you. I could have probably beat you there at that at that number at some point. Uh, that wasn't in my speech. Uh, Twenty thousand in debt to a millionaire in three years. How did he do this? You ask. Well, he turned his mediocre social media following into raving fans. A heavy dose of authenticity, three dashes of caring, bam, and a whole lot of hard work was the recipe for a skyrocketing career that left so many people in awe. Justin will give actionable tips on how to interact with your database on a high level to put your caviar on the table for your family. You can call him Justel, Ju uh, Justel. You can call him Justin Humblebaum, ladies and gentlemen. Because that was very humble, very humble beginnings in a humble introduction. I love that. Did so, you, Justin, did you go to ChatGPT to, to create that or was that all you? No, my brain is messed up, man. <laughs> he said chat gpt he said chat chat gpt write a bio about justin hillbomb and that's what i came out with and he's like wow that's accurate <laughs> that's good and make him like... sound like the biggest turd possible <laughs> oh. so let's get started justin so you were dead broke tell us a little bit about that not just dead broke negative broke yeah so i you know i was a bartender and i i had a lot of debt and I just figured, you know what? I can't lose any more money. Let me try real estate. Everyone who does it seems like they're crushing it. So I just went and uh, <laughs> went and tried my hand. You know, honestly, what happened was I was bartending and the people who come into the bar that were successful realtors were schlubs. They were like total dorks. And I was like, I'm also a dork. So this is going to work out. <laughs> That's good. I love how good everyone was crushing it on social media as a realtor. Everyone. Everyone. Um, so you were bartending. I was bartending too. At what uh, Before I got into real estate, at what point did you decide, you know what? I can now get out of the bartending industry and go full-fledged into real estate. What was that moment for you? I was, you know, my legs were hurting. I was tired. I, I really had a, an issue with all the people who were coming to the bar and were actually alcoholics. When I started bartending, it looked like everyone was just having fun. I was introducing people. I was the host of a large party every night. And then I started watching people get their second and third DUIs. And I was like, oh, some of these people have actual problems and I am facilitating and enabling that problem. I don't want to be part of this anymore. And... I was dating a girl at the time whose dad was a billionaire. And so I knew she wasn't about to marry a bartender. He wasn't letting that happen. So I had to go figure out something real quick. So uh, fortunately she left me about six months later. So you realize I got to start getting these people drunk in their own houses alone. Boom. Absolutely. And then we get them to sign and it's all good. Yeah. Um. So and Tristan, butt in whenever you, you want to, by the way. Uh, you had the the amazing thing. The amazing thing about you is that you're, you're following on Instagram still is not considered like, I mean, I think you'd be like a micro influencer by your numbers. But I think like 
you know, people think, oh, I have to have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers in order to make a lot of money on social media. But you've proven that that's not true. And you said something funny to me. You're like, I actually, because I thought it was 8,000. You said, actually, at 5,000, when I became a millionaire, I got another 3,000. <laughs> like, that, that put me over the 8,000 mark. Um, so you have a small audience that's if you go to your instagram it really does look like you have hundreds of thousands of followers by the amount of engagement that you get how did you how did you build that up to have you know to have that many people engaging with you with a following that most people would be like huh, that's nothing you know what i mean yeah i think what was key there was creating raving fans in your database and there's a bunch of books about that right um, the one I like the most is the purple cow, right? You really have to be a purple cow and someone who stands out from the crowd. And a lot of about, a lot of that is finding your own voice in the MREA. Um, Gary Keller and Jay Papazon talk about uh, the the clay pots split the class in half. One half has to you know go out there and make the pot. The other half of the class has to go out. And just make as many pots as possible. And at the end of the year, they get graded. And what they find is that if you fail better, if you fail faster and you fail fail better, you will succeed way more than anybody else. What no one sees in the best entrepreneurs and the best business people is they're the ones that fail the most. Um, they're just okay with failure and they learn from their failures. It's hmm. a very true statement, man. So... When you're looking at growing your business from Instagram, where does it mainly come from on Instagram? Is it the stories, the reels, the the regular posts, the DMs? What does it look like? A really good question. So when I started my career, I had no money, right? I was 20. At the time I started, I was about 8,000 in debt. And by the time I made it, by the time I had money coming in, I was $20,000 in debt. So that's not enough money to really, uh, I don't, you, you can't go to a bank and say, Hey, I have negative a thousand dollars. Can I buy something? Right. Stores don't really accept that. So where, where I really excelled was I had this, I had this platform called Facebook and Instagram and my I have a special version. I don't know if you guys have this version, but mine it allows me to post anything I want for free. What? So that's a, yeah. That's premium. That's Holy premium. smokes. That's a yeah, good it's version. A super, it's a crazy account. You must know Mark Zuckerberg very well. I, I do. We're both Jewish, you know? So <laughs> uh, I had this account where I could post absolutely anything I wanted for free as long as it didn't violate certain laws, right? Right. I'd have my clothes on. Mm. So we'll get into I that. take most of them off in a lot of my videos, which you'll be able to see later. Um, but, you know, it allowed me to post for free. And I was able to interact with my database for free. So Tristan, to go back to your question, in 2004, I'm a senior in high school. Facebook comes out. So I say to all my friends, hey, I know we're going to different colleges, but I'm this insecure kid who loves all of you and wants to keep in touch. And I want you to forget about me. So can we, can I follow you? Can we be friends on Facebook? And so I friended every, like as many people as I could on Facebook right then. As soon as I got it, which was the summer between senior year and college. Because you had to have a college email address in 2004 to about 2010 to have Facebook, right? And so I put all these people into my CRM, which I have no idea is a CRM at the time. Keep up with them. And then as this goes on, I get my real estate license and I can post and all these people still follow me. So all these people who live in my hometown, which I still live in, still follow me on Facebook. I've converted a lot of them to Instagram as well. And then when they go to buy a home, especially during the pandemic, where my friends were about 32, 33, 34 during the pandemic, they're all having kids want to be closer to their parents. Who's the idiot who kept up with people who lived thousands of miles away over the past 10 years? this guy. So they all call me because I'm their only realtor they know. Whereas, you know, if you live in a town, everybody knows five realtors that live there. 
but why do Zillow leads work so why do leads work so effectively that come from because they come from out of town they don't already know 10 realtors in your town so I used what became my sphere of influence who didn't know realtors in town except me when they come back to move close to their parents to get help with their kids during the pandemic all of those buyers came to me um how did you how did you stay in front of everyone with with content that connected with them so they would want yeah. to use you what type of content was that it's a great question so finish answering the previous question then i'll get to that one and the uh, the thing i did so it's not it's both what i posted and how i interacted with them so when i first got my license i spent two hours a day just commenting on their stories and posts on social media and i've kept that habit up till today six years in I spend two hours a day. I have to make at least a hundred comments. And that is how I stay in front of my database. Um, a super easy way, right? Because I mean, Tristan, Nick, I don't, I can't see the other people's hands. I mean, feel free to comment in the chat. Comment if you like it when you get a robocall. The comments are the chat is not blowing up i want you to know you know you know who no calls me all the time you know who calls me all the time this guy potential spam calls oh me all he's the time. a good guy he's a good guy i should pick up he is you should pick up okay he's got a lot of alter egos but you should pick up try it out <laughs> so so you like that how but comment in the chat if you like when you post something on social media and someone comments it on it and says something purposeful right? Do you yeah. like it when someone says, Hey man, your vacation looked awesome. Enjoy Greece. Can't wait to talk when you get back. Everyone likes that, right? Love it. So, so I spend two hours a day. Exactly. I spend two, two hours a day being my database's dopamine dealer and that's it. So one of the drugs that you can actually deal and does not get you in jail. is dopamine. Yeah. Well, you know, when the, the first yeah. time I met you, we were doing this event in Colorado and you basically are saying that, well, Tristan asked you the content, but your yeah. content, even though you do create it, I would say half of your content is appreciating other people, is yes. going to their profiles and liking and commenting and messaging and just letting them know that you're paying attention, which a lot of people don't. I mean, how many times have you seen Instagram pages where some 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 influencer will throw up a reel and then ever, um, they'll have all these comments and they're just ghosting them? It's awful. Or, or they're just not engaging with other people at all. They just put up videos to, you know, say, hey, look at me. Look what exactly. I'm doing. It's a two yeah, so to finish, to finish Tristan's to finish Tristan's question is what do I post is a not is a great question, right? I had to post enough content that said I was successful, right? Because if I right. didn't post that, no one wants to work with a realtor who sold two homes, right? Unless your family or a really close friend, really hard to to you know, that's the person you're gonna pick. So what I what I recommend is that you post content that is engaging, authentic, and shows that you're trustworthy, right? So ways you can do that, right, is posting that you sold a house early on. That's great. Even posting you're showing a house. If you don't have any listings, just going to a listing and putting the camera on your face and saying, look... I'm here at 123 Main Street. If you're looking for a house under $500,000 in Delray Beach, this is the best for you. It's got a pool. Almost no house under $500,000 has a pool in Delray. You would love this spot. Contact me now if you need something, right? Good point. And that's what I did. I just turned the camera on myself. And then the second thing I did was try and make content that would be a purple cow, right? Content that would stick out a little bit and just be different. Um and for me, that was showing my personality, right? So, you know, a lot of my videos are me jumping in pools or me wearing, I'm um, wearing a romper in two of my videos. And then lately I've been trying to connect TikTok viral, viral TikToks to real estate, right? 
So if I see something that's going viral on TikTok, I basically try and recreate that in a listing video. Because the truth is, Tristan, Nick, everybody on this call, we've all seen 150 people go, hey, my name's Justin Himmelbaum. Welcome to 123 Main Street. Let's go inside, right? We've all <laughs> seen it so many times. And then let me guess, it has white marble or quartz countertops, and it has a uh, slightly nice faucet and the water's running and the camera's panning around like this. Like we've seen it, we're, we're bored. So you have to do something that stands out. And so what I like to, what I really want to emphasize the people that are on this webinar, you're the product, the house is not the product. You're trying to get more people to call you by making these videos. You're not trying to sell the house from the video. No one is buying a house because they saw the video online and went, you know what? Delray Beach does sound nice. I'm a ch and look at those countertops. I'd live anywhere for those countertops. It's just not it, right? You're selling yourself. I mean, whatever, whatever we in want to illegal, do off this one, it's fine. In a legal way. But exactly, in a legal way. So remember that you are the product when it comes to making these videos and making your content. It doesn't have to be great. It just has to be different. I also think, Justin, you take a lot of risks. Like there's this one video you saw that particularly stands out to me. I tried to find it again on your Instagram. But he he, he takes this listing and he, he's basically like insulting the listing the entire time. He's like, I just got this listing and no wonder they're moving. This place is horrible. He's like, come inside. <laughs> and then he shows this beautiful kitchen. He's like, clearly, it's beautiful. Clearly hoarders live here. This is, I mean, look, oh, marble countertops. Oh, big deal. Wow. Like, <laughs> he's just insulting this house. And it's just, that's what you're talking about. Like, that's the guy I want to call. Because it's a risk and it's hilarious. And sure, someone's going to buy the house. But you are, you are the star of that video, not the house. And I just thought it was hysterical. <laughs> Dude, yeah. you want to you want to see hysterical? Hold on, this is a good one. I loved this one. Hold is on. this from Justin's page? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, give me a second. All right, uh, it's this one. I'm gonna. Press oh, that's it. my favorite one. That, that's oh, my favorite see. one too. I was well, play I was, it, play it, play it, play it, play it. All right, let me let me unmute. Let me unmute this one so it can be ready. Okay, uh, unmute it on the other one. Oh, that one. Yeah, I've seen that one. No, oh, here we go. can't really hear it you have to share your audio tristan i know i know yeah let me put the link for everybody put it in the put it in the chat another one <laughs> were you just sitting on the you're lucky that thing didn't break from under you <laughs> like hey look this is a hey, bathroom hey, we go get, poop in there you get the point <laughs> on that one but you just, you know, I think at the end of the day, you just have to be, you have to stay top of mind, right? Because mind share equals market share. And so the more mind share you can grow in your database, the more market share you're going to grow. So whatever you can do to have people remember you, if you do what everyone else is doing, that doesn't work. When everyone goes left, you go right. Tony Robbins said it at family reunion, right? Do you? You can't go where everyone else is going. When everyone's scared, you get greedy. When everyone's greedy, you get scared. Yeah, totally. Um, talk about your, can we talk about your little secret? Your little. Which one? About my virtual secret? He's got a lot of little secrets, Nick. Yeah, I'm talking about the one that we're allowed to talk about on this webinar. Can we talk about your virtual assistant? Yeah. And how that And how she helps you? Because- people will be like, wow, I don't know. Can, how do I just comment all day long? You know, you know, how do I just do this nonstop? Talk about your virtual assistant and how she helps you with your Instagram. Yeah. So my, my virtual assistant is the one who now spends two hours a day on Instagram, making a hundred comments, right? She makes a hundred comments. It opens up on average 30 to 40 conversations a day. And I just have those conversations, right? So think about it like cold calling. We we kind of we put out a hundred really good comments. She's really good at this after 
two plus years of doing it. When the person responds, I open up a conversation and try and lead that conversation to real estate in a very like non-abrasive way. So my cyber backer, Claire, is also, she goes in there, she makes the hundred comments. And then once you respond, it's me, right? I take over from there Got it. because I need to have the nuanced conversation that could lead to deeper connection and to sales. What I don't need to do is make that hand raising comment because only 20 to 40% of my database is even going to respond. And I don't need to waste my time figuring out who's going to respond. But once they do respond, then it's on me to turn that into business. So my birthday is coming up in three days. I'm probably going to get a message from you. I've come to accept the fact that it may not be you, but that's okay. It's still very thoughtful. Um, tell me about your happy birthday process. Yeah. So it's one of my, one of my favorite and most actionable tools. So I love to share this with the community because everyone should be doing this. It's super easy. You don't need an assistant for it. You just need 15 minutes. And so Mondays and Thursdays, I go in to Facebook and it'll tell you everybody's birthday on Facebook seven to 10 days before. So you go in, you go through that list of whose birthdays are coming up in the next few days and you you send them a direct message that says, hey, Nick, I see your birthday coming up. You know, what are you grateful for going into this next year of your life? And, and I'm really sorry that I can't be there with you to get a coffee, but I would like to send you a card and a coffee. What's the best address for you? So we send a $5 Starbucks gift card and a personal note and a card. Listen, I use AM cards to send out the cards. I use my cyber backer does everything except I make the personal note, right? That's my only job is I have to make the personal note, but you don't have to go as far as making a personal note, right? You just recognizing that it's their birthday and messaging them a few days early is already making you a purple cow or something I like to talk about the Taylor Swift principle, which I won't get off track. I'll stay here for now. And then we'll explain the Taylor Swift principle after. Um, but you've already reached out to them three days before and they're like, man, this guy's on it. So whether they love the fact that you reached out, which I would say like 30% of my database gets really pumped that like, I realized it was their birthday. I took the time to message. 70% probably doesn't really care, but what a hundred percent of my database that sees this knows is that I'm hardworking, right? So sometimes it's not about the direct effect of actually sending the card. Sometimes it's just, Hey man, this guy's got systems and processes. When I sell my house, I want to sell it with a guy who has a plan. I want to sell it with a guy who's motivated and is working hard. I love that. Tell us about the Taylor Swift principle because I remember you telling us about it once and it's really good. Yeah. And everyone needs to understand. And it's kind of how you, I mean, everything you do on social media is the Taylor Swift principle. So tell us what that is. Yeah, so it goes it goes along with Purple Cow. It's kind of like I meld the two together. Um, purple Cow just means stand out, right? There's You never see a Purple Cow, so if you did, you'd be like, whoa, there's a Purple Cow. Taylor Swift principle is in line with that, right? What is the Taylor Swift principle? Okay, so what you do is you go, you get a listing, and you have a horrible breakup with it, and then you write a song about it. I'm just, I'm just kidding. That's not what you do. The Taylor Swift principle... <laughs> Write a I whole album, Swift, first of all. I think I got Swifties in the comments kicking me here. Yeah, um, Swifties are not happy. They've canceled it. So what the Taylor Swift principle is, is people would reach out to Taylor all the time and say, hey, will you play at my 12-year-old's birthday party? Hey, would you play at this like high school graduation? The She makes a million over a million dollars every time she plays at a stadium. So the opportunity cost of her going in and singing at a 12 year old's birthday party is astronomical, right? However, the publicity of her going and singing at a 12 year old's birthday party makes publicity that she couldn't pay a billion dollars for, right? It makes her famous all over the world and endears her to so many people. 
and creates that goodwill in the in the community. And that's why there are so many Swifties, right? It's all those little things that she's done that don't make sense, but make her who she is. So where in your life can you enact the Taylor Swift principle? Where in your life can you go that one step farther, do that thing that doesn't really make sense, right? Your friend's in the hospital, you got a busy day, go show up for your friend. You know, it's little things like that. That's how you create, create real connection. In a world full of, we live in a world that's, everyone's thinking about opportunity cost of everything. Everyone's thinking about how can I make the most money from the least work? When you go above and beyond and you do more work than anybody would ever think to do, you create connection with that person that makes you their realtor for life. And that's going to put more money in your pocket than anything else you could possibly, any 36 touch, 78 touch, 2 billion touch. None of that is as important as showing up for people when they need you. So if you can figure out how to, you know, how to be their Angie's list. You have to, you know, if they need a date, you should be the one they call. Hey, I'm single and I'm looking for a guy. I want him to be about, you know, five foot eight, bald with a shitty red beard. Sorry about my language. <laughs> you know, first of all, I feel like I resemble this remark, but I'm five, <laughs> but I'm five ten. Five seven? Oh, okay. Um so if that's you know you I'm a know, Hollywood I'm a Hollywood five ten, I love it. I'm really a five eight. No, um. so when you you want people to always think about you for everything, and so that's why my slogan is keep calm, call Himmelbaum, right? I don't care what it is. The best you need you need a restaurant tomorrow night, you call Himmelbaum. Yeah, you need a plumber, you call Himmelbaum. You need someone to come do manual labor at your work at your house, you call Himmelbaum. I'm not showing up to do it but I sure as hell will get you somebody who will do it. And so when you can become that ingrained in people's lives and you can create that much value, being their realtor, them paying you 3% or 6%, that's nothing compared to all the value you've provided for them in their life. Hey, there's a good question here from Aaron in the chat yeah. about your VA. How does she know who to make comments to on your Instagram? Like, what if you have a really great relationship with someone and the comment is kind of generic? Like, how do you keep that from happening? We have a, we have a list of people that she okay. doesn't interact with, you know, my top hundred, yeah. we try okay. and keep her, we try and keep her away from, or we keep the comments like very vague because she, she doesn't know how much I might know about that particular situation right there. Right. Um, but she comments yeah. the way she does comment is mostly just go through Instagram or Facebook stories and just goes down the line. Um, but if I've gotten a lot of likes on a reel or comments on a reel or comments on a post, then she'll go into each of those people because those are people interacting with your content. You want to go back and interact with them to create yeah. raving fans. Hey, I have one question. One last yeah. question for me. I don't know, Tristan, if you have anything else, but this is just, I think, a question that everybody has, right? A lot of agents are not creating content. And what are some tips you can give them to just get started? Like something simple that they can go and do something right after this to get yeah. them. There, you know, there's so many angles to go with that. But if you have a listing, the best thing you could do is just go to that listing, shoot some B-roll, and just talk about homes, right? You could do it at your own home. Nobody knows. Just shoot B-roll. So everyone knows what B-roll is. It's just like you walking around, you fluffing the pillows on the couch. It's nothing like super intense, super easy to do. And then put some words over that, you know, hey, are you looking for homes under 500,000 in Palm Beach County? Call me. Do, let me know in the comments, DM me, right? Anything like that is super easy. You should, everyone should be starting out with that content. If you're trying to get buyers, hey, do you want a list of homes under 500,000 with pools in X area? Easy. And ChatGPT, I mean, you ask ChatGPT, they'll come up with a billion of these. Um, 
but all stuff, stuff like that works. And then get on camera and show your personality a little bit. And I know that that's, it seems weird, but just look at the camera and think of the camera as your ideal client, right? So you turn the phone on yourself and you say, you just pretend it's Nick Baldwin, right? Although he can't afford a house. If he could, what we would do is we'd be talking to Nick and we'd say, you know, hey, you know, if you're looking for a house right now under $500,000, I have three that I know of. Message me right now and I'd love to help you, right? Super simple. Or, hey, I know interest rates are kind of crazy right now. Message me if you want to have a real conversation with a human being about how this might affect you personally, instead of just getting this from CNN or MB MSNBC or wherever you're getting it from. Someone was asking what B-roll is. I'm just going to give an actual definition of it. Okay. It's supplementary footage that's intercut with the main shot in video production and filmmaking. So like it's a, like an establishing shot or like a group, like if you're at a ball game, it's like a shot of the crowd before we actually get to the actual scene of the, of the, of the movie itself. So like if you're shooting a video of a home, a B-roll would be like, maybe you would do a pan or a pan view of like downtown or, you know, something along those lines until you actually get to the main topic. So that's what B-roll is. Very fancy Hollywood talk. Tristan's in the Hollywood area. He understands all of that lingo. Listen, the video is live on YouTube. If you want to watch it, it's already being recorded live. And Jake just put in the link right there. Follow us on YouTube. Follow Justin oh, on yeah, Instagram. People are asking. And Nick and myself, just jump into Lab Coats. If you're not in there, we're happy to have you in there. Justin, this was awesome, man. I took I took quite a bit of notes. I, I love your I love your comment on I spend my day dealing dopamine. That was really good. I love that. that Who was... said hope dealer? Who's the who's someone famous, someone well known? I'm a hope dealer. I forget. This but was good, man. Dopamine dealer. Love yeah, it, dude. I, I put that there. So thanks for thanks for doing this. We appreciate you. Absolutely. Thanks, Thank Justin. you guys for the opportunity. Uh any yeah. final thoughts, questions, comments? I think people are just wow, I'm gonna do this and be rich. Well, yeah. It takes time, just like everything. But Justin, thank you so much, dude. Appreciate it. We had a good time. This has been fun. Absolutely. If you got if you got referrals in South Florida, send them my way. I'm gonna go and grow a couple inches because clearly I'm uh, only five eight. So I'm gonna go and do that. Nothing wrong with yeah. five eight guys. That's my height. Oh, are you five eight? Yeah. I'm five eight. Just oh. saying. Nothing. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong. Up? Nothing wrong. Unless you're five ten, then five eight is too short. Who makes your videos? Justin, you make your videos. Or do you I have a videographer? Uh, I have a videographer that I use. But you can also do it yourself with like a yeah. gimbal or make sure you stabilize it too. Some of my favorite products, if people are looking for products. Yeah, what do um, you use to edit and stuff? I use the DJI Osmo Pocket Gimbal a lot. Yeah, that was cool. That's really easy for shooting content. The DJI uh, mini drone, I think it's the four that they're on, is really good. Super compact. You could bring it everywhere and can just film quick B-roll shots from above, from the air, which helps a lot. Um, and then for editing, I've been using Camtasia on my computer or CapCut on my phone. Also, I use Descript, which I love. Mm. Uh, but it's only on desktop, but it's really good. And it's not expensive. 25 bucks a month. It does everything. It's yeah. got a learning curve, but they have a lot of instructional videos, but it's really good. Cool. So, all right, cool, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. This has been fun. Thank Thanks you guys for the opportunity. Keep calm. Call him a bomb.